This is Rostro Castanato interviewing Tommy Cook at the July 2023 Burbank Hollywood show. So now, out of all the characters in film and television that you've played, which one is your favorite? Well, going way back to the golden days of radio, uh, working with the top people in radio, uh, I have some of my fondest memories, especially working with Arch Obler, the iconic Arch Obler, and his Everyman's Theater and Plays for Americans on NBC. But I played Junior in the Life of Riley with William Bendix, NBC, and I was little Alexander on the Blondie Show with um, Arthur Lake and Penny Singleton at CBS. And I did play Little Beaver in the original Adventures of Red Riders serial at Republic Studios, 1940. Huh. And then I did the radio show as a Little Beaver on ABC uh, for three years. So um, those were great experiences, and uh, that's what keeps me going. Oh, I had so much fun. Um, I loved riding horses, and uh, there were two directors on the Red Rider um, um, series, William Whitney and John English, and William Whitney had his own horses at his home. And on the weekends, he would invite me over and I'd go horseback riding with them all day. And then on Little Papoose, my horse in the, uh, in the, uh, in the cereal, uh, it, was, it was a joy. And we did a lot of location uh, shooting out in the valley, out in Encino. And in those days, you could buy an acre of footage for $10. Tough. Um, so, um, yeah, but those, those were fun days, and uh, everybody treated me very, very well. I've had quite a career, about 3,000 radio shows. I starred in five motion pictures. One of them, uh, The Vicious Years, written by N. Richard Nash, who wrote The Rainmaker. I won the Photoplay Magazine Award for the leading performance of the year. So well, that, was, that was nice. But um, I'm now, I created two films, one of which was Roller Coaster, back in 1977 that I sold to Universal. And um, a couple of years later, a tennis film called Players with Ally McGraw, and uh, the late Dean Paul Martin, G uh, Dean Martin's son. Right. And um, um, the Academy Award winner, uh, Maximilian Schell, huh. was in the film. And now I'm working on um, the follow up to uh, Roller Coaster. It's called White Knuckles Last Ride. Huh. And um, so I hope to have the screenplay finished. I have two writers working with me on it. And um, hopefully next year we can go into uh, production. But um, it's a terrific story and very appealing to the younger audience throughout the world. And a uh, nice love story. And a, um, I'd love to have somebody like... Um, Jennifer Lawrence or Scarlett Johansson playing the female protagonist oh. and a Chris Evans playing the male protagonist and for the young villain Timothy Chalamet ah, nice. a great change for him to play this villain great great role oh. so we'll keep our fingers crossed for White Knuckles The Last Ride oh, very nice what was the first television show that you appeared on? I did so many of the westerns. Rifleman, Wyatt Earp, I did a lot of Wyatt Earp. I've done about a hundred television shows. And of course, so many films. As I say, I starred in five feature films. And the great stars of yesteryear, they were the best. The entertainment industry has some of the most creative and loving people in the world. 
and um, I've been in the business since I was eight years old, so uh, it's given me a lot of thrills. Traveled around the world on location for films, like I went to the Philippines um, way back and was featured with Tyrone Power, an American guerrilla in the Philippines. I played one of the Philippine underground leaders and I spoke some Filipino. I still remember some of the dialogue. Oh, nice. But, um, those were great days. Tyrone Power was terrific. Uh, the director was Fritz Lang, a German director who directed years before some classic films. The um, American Grilla was one of the last films he ever directed. He was a little bit difficult to yeah. work with, but um, I enjoyed I enjoyed being with Tyrone Power on the film. Of course, he was one of the leading um, personalities in show business. When we arrived in Manila to shoot most of the film, 15,000 people were at the airport to greet Tyrone Power and the crew. So that gives you an idea of how exciting it was. Um, I'll always remember my days in radio because it was like a family. Uh, Elliot Lewis, Hans Conry, uh, Mercedes McCambridge, those were some of the great radio artists. And we worked together, we would go to dinner together, you know, it was like a family. Right. Like a family. There was nothing like it. To be able to work with Orson Welles and Norman Corwin, who was one of the great writers, he won an Academy Award for a screenplay at MGM, huh. and um, and then Art Schobler and his award-winning plays, Every Man's Theater and Plays for Americans. Uh, uh, those memories, those memories were the keep me going, keep huh. me going. Oh, very nice. What inspired you to become a child actor and actor? Well, I have no memory. I uh, was born in Minnesota, Duluth, Minnesota. And after I was born, my father, who was a Harvard graduate, very brilliant, and wonderful dad, came down with kidney disease. Oh. So he couldn't work. And uh, so that's why we came to California for the weather and his health. They tell me that when I was very young, at our Rotary Club meetings, I would get up and start dancing and fooling around, and, and then I would entertain my grandparents and put on funny costumes. So when we came out here, my mother thought, well, maybe I've got some talent. And she took me to the famous Pasadena Playhouse, and I auditioned. And I got the lead in a play, Peter Goes to the Fair, directed by Betty Smith. And I stayed there and did seven plays. Now, my mother sees an advertisement in a magazine for a free uh, interview and taping at NBC Studios at Sunset and Vine in Hollywood. So I go there and they take my voice. Two weeks later, I get a call back, come in and audition for Arch Obler on his Everyman's Theater radio show. For a show starring the great Russian actress Alan Nazimova. Huh. Well, I get the role because it called for a little German boy. And for some reason, I could play this little German. I could have the accent. I don't know where I got it, but I could do it with a German accent. Yes. So after the show, Arch comes out. Thanks, everybody. He says, I got to go to Chicago next week. I got to do a show uh, and this, with this young kid, Dickie Hyland. But I don't want to go to Chicago. I don't know what to do. Alan Nazimova whispers into Arch's ears, and he says, she says, if you don't want to go to Chicago, 
take a chance on this little Tommy Cook. Next week, I star in Problem Papa, the episode in Everyman Theater. Howard Duck plays my father. Mercedes McCambridge is the leading gal. And of course, the great Gordon Jenkins doing the music. And that's what set me off becoming part of Arch Older Stock Company and starring on his shows throughout the years. Those were the great days. Well, Arch Obler would announce to the press, and he even told my parents, I may say so. He says, you know, Mrs. Cook, your son gives more freshness and, and, and natural expression to a role than any young actor I've ever worked with. So that was quite a compliment to Arch. And Arch would not let me take a script home. Oh. We would read it around the table and then leave and come back the next day for the dress rehearsal. He would not let me read the script uh, or to take it home and to fool around with the character at all because he wrote parts for me, you know, and he knew that I was that kid, you know, and he just wanted it to be natural. And uh, the way Arch Obler could write, like it was, like, like it was me, just coming out of my mouth. Oh, cool. very nice. Well, thank you for allowing me to interview you. Thank you. Nice being with you. My pleasure. Love your work. Thank you. Well, there you have it. That was Roscoe Castanato interviewing Tommy Cook.